Well, good morning and welcome to Worship Online at Altador Baptist Church. Um, our uh, worship services are changing in structure just a little bit as we move into uh, this year, this fall. We're going to start doing on the first and third Sundays traditional services and online they will be there for you as well. However, the second Sunday of each month, we were, are going to do what's called Table Church, and it will be a much more informal uh, time of fellowship um, and worship together in, um, in around tables in our gymnasium, and um, hopefully it will be uh, more intergenerational and um, able to be just a little bit more uh, family-friendly. On the fourth Sunday of each month, we are going to bring back our Altador informals, which take on all kinds of different um, looks, depending on the time and then what is um, current and facing us. Sometimes it will be acts of service. Sometimes it will be educational and learning about some of the things God would uh, like to be teaching us that we feel. And sometimes it's just going to be meeting a need within our congregation. And that is this Sunday. This Sunday, um, we are going to have a good old-fashioned hymn sing. We've been pleased to be able to welcome Ethan Hill to um, be our organist and pianist this uh, fall. And he is going to play for us on the organ. So um, those of us that are able to meet in person today are going to be singing um, a lot of hymns. Some of them um, will be favorites from the congregation and some will be um, ones that we know to be favorite that also have some things to teach us. So our video today is going to be short because I'm going to encourage you to go and listen to the playlist where we have put some of the hymns that we know are favorites and we also are encourage you to find your own favorites uh, hymns and sing along to them. Our acknowledgement this morning. We acknowledge that our church sits on Treaty 7 territory, the traditional and ancestral territory of the Blackfoot Confederacy, Kanai, Pakani, and Siksika, as well as the Sutina Nation and the Stony Nakoda Nation. We also acknowledge that this territory is home to the Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3, within the historical Northwest Métis homeland. We acknowledge that many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, who have lived in and cared for these lands for generations. And we are grateful for the traditional knowledge keepers and elders who are still with us today and those who have gone before us. And we make this acknowledgement as an act of re reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory we reside on or are visiting. We affirm our pledge to stand for justice and our commitment that our church is a place where all people, regardless of race, culture, sexuality, or faith are welcome. Together, we hope that all can find the true love of God and authentic community. And we want to acknowledge that this coming week is uh, Truth and Reconciliation Day. And we know that um, we have a long way to go as we work toward um, truth and reconciliation for all peoples, particularly our Indigenous peoples. So our church this Thursday, September the 30th, will be open from 7 to 8 in the evening for um, anyone to come and spend some time in prayer and listening to God um, as he leads us forward into what will hopefully be a time where reconciliation is um, definitely possible. Our call to worship from Psalm 95 verses 1 and 2. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Father God, we do praise you and we do sing. We extol you with music and song. And we thank you for the wonderful gift of music that you have given us. And we thank you for the people who over the generations have been um, gifted and 
blessed by you to give us ways to praise you with music and song. And so we do that today. In your name, we pray. So um, our first hymn is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, if you want to find it on the um, playlist, and then followed by Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. I encourage you now to do that. Our next hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And Kathleen Blanchard, in a book about stories about popular hymns from quite a number of years ago, writes about this hymn and the hymn writer, Joseph Scriven, who was born in Ireland in 1820, and he graduated from Trinity College, Dublin. At the age of 25, he came to Canada and stayed at Rice Lake, Ontario. Eventually, he lived in Port Hope, Ontario, where he stayed the rest of his life. It is no secret that in 1945, life was not as easy in Canada as it is today. And Joseph Hart was very much touched by the, way, by the many hardships of the poor. He lived with several families, sometimes as a guest, sometimes as a teacher. He had made up his mind to use his life helping others. He had his own particular way of doing so and did not es escape the description eccentric. Many a day he gladly gave his time to the people unable to pay. He was the friend of the poor and needy. Nothing was any trouble for those who were sick and bedridden. His clothes he gave away until he was scanty himself. His heart was full of brotherly kindness and sympathy. But Scriven was a lonely man. The only link he had with his family at home were the slow traveling letters. In, 19, er, in 1857, his mother was ill. She had a great sorrow. Joseph was far away, but he could write and comfort her. This he did, enclosing this inspired hymn written for her to renew her strength and to dispel her fears. And he wrote, what a friend we have in Jesus. Ira, Ira Sankey says in the book, My Life and Sacred Songs, Mr. Scriven wrote this hymn near Port Hope in Canada, but his authorship remained a secret. A neighbor sitting up with him in his final illness happened upon a manuscript copy of What a Friend We Have in Jesus, reading it with delight and questioning Mr. Scriven about it. He said he had composed it for his mother to comfort her in a time of special sorrow, not intending that anyone else should see it. Some time later, when another neighbor asked him if it were true that he had composed the hymn, his reply was, the Lord and I did it between us. And now Scri Mr. Joseph Scriven was a sick man. He had fits of despondency. One sad day in 1886, he was found drowned near Rice Lake. No one ever knew how it happened. His memory was much beloved in the district. They put up a monument to the friend of the poor. So did Joseph Scriven give Canada's great contribution to this wonderful hymn of posterity. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let's sing it now, shall we? Isn't it wonderful to be able to worship together in song and to come together in prayer? So let us pray this morning. Creator God, Christ our Savior, and Holy Spirit our Comforter and Counselor, we come before you today together in prayer, marveling once again that you welcome us into your presence. You delight in us. It is such a privilege to be your sons and your daughters. It is such a privilege to know that you love us so incredibly and unconditionally. And that you continue to be patient with us, working in us, helping us to become a little bit more like you. We marvel at the wonder of the way music reaches into our souls and helps us to express our praise and our worship and our love in ways that sometimes we can't. 
And we are grateful that we have you, our wonderful friend, who helps us to bear all of life. And we give to you all our cares as you ask us to cast them to you and let you carry them for us. And we give to you our confession of the way that we have sinned against you. And we pray that you will continue to forgive us time and time again as you promise. It is such a blessing to know that you do indeed forgive us and that we can have total trust in faith in that. There are so many things we are thinking of today. We think of people within our congregation who are grieving. We think of Dan recovering in hospital and we marvel at the things that you are still doing in and through him and we pray you will continue to heal him. We think of all of those who are suffering from COVID and we pray, Lord, that you will heal. Around the world, there are so many that are hurting and who are needing your touch. We think of our elections and we pray that you will help the newly elected government of our nation to come together in unity with your will and your priorities in mind. May they seek you as they set forth on this new chapter. We pray for our provincial government where unity is something that is not there and we pray that you will help them to come together with you as the center and to rule with your wisdom and your grace. We particularly pray for our civic election that is coming once again. Raise up your people, O oh God so that they may govern this city according to your will. Help us to be faithful in our prayers. Help us to be faithful in our support and our caring. May we be your hands and feet and that may all we do honor and glorify you. We think today particularly of our marginalized people groups, particularly this week we pray for the, our Indigenous neighbours. So many years of hurt, so many years of abuse, may we be part of allowing the truth to come forward and working toward reconciliation, bringing about unity, bringing about understanding and ensuring that all peoples know that they are loved by you and important and valued, respected. Work in us, we pray, work through us, we pray. We praise your holy name and acknowledge that you are, are our God who has helped us in the past and will continue to do so in the future and is leading and guiding us right now. We place all our trust in you for you alone are worthy. Amen.
Our next hymn is, Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. It was written by Isaac Watt, who we actually learned some lesson from in a message a few years ago. And again, many consider this hymn by Isaac Watt the finest in the English language. It was composed in 1714 during the time of national anxiety as the succession to the throne. Queen Anne was nearing the end of her reign and she had no direct heir. Her family of eight had all died at birth. Her husband had predeceased her by some eight years and her friendships had proved unhappy. She was disillusioned and lonely. The queen had served the state well. She had been a moderate, a stout hearted Protestant, thoughtful of her people, generous and kindly, establishing out of her own pocket the renowned Queen Anne's bounty. She built many churches. Her people styled her Good Queen Anne. Comparisons of the Queen's personality with the George of Hanover, heir apparent, did not work to the latter's advantage, and general concern and foreboding was felt at the prospect of a man who would speak no English and knew little or nothing of English ways occupying the English throne. Isaac Watts, a guest at the home of Sir Charles and Lady Abney, wrote this hymn to calm the nation's fears. It was published in leaflet form and distributed widely. Some six years later, the famous organist of Westminster Abbey composed the majestic tune to our God, our help in ages past. Let us sing it together, shall we? And finally, uh, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross is another, one, another favorite hymn. And if you were in Westminster Abbey, you may come upon the monument erected there in memory of Isaac Watts, who was the author of this hymn. Matthew Arnold declared, it is the finest hymn in the English language. It certainly has withstood the test of time, doesn't it? Catherine Blanchard continues, Watts, brought up in a Puritan home in Southampton, was once taken as a child in the arms of his mother and sat on a stone outside the prison while she talked to his father through the bars. Freedom of religious thought had not yet been secured and the views of the elder Watts was not those of the authorities. So as a child, Watts was never strong, but his mental powers were far above the average. After some years spent as a minister at the Independent Church in Mark Lane, London, ill health compelled him to resign. He went as a guest to the beautiful home of Sir Thomas and Lady Abney and stayed there for over 30 years, an invalid more or less all his life. His comfortable and happy surroundings there enabled him to devote his mind to many learned works. There it was that he wrote most of his beautiful hymns. It was the age of the great hymn writers. When Watts was 30 years old, Doddridge was born. 20 years later, the two were friends. The Wellesleys and Peronet Newton and Cowper were inspired writers of the age. The solemnity of this great hymn fills the heart with awe and reverence, and the words are simple, direct, and sincere. The hymn owes a great deal to the tune composed and adapted by Edward Miller in 1790, 42 years after the death of Isaac Watts. Let us sing together this wonderful, wonderful hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And we are going to sing together our benediction, God be with you till we meet again. And so I encourage you to sing that one along uh, with us. And now, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.